Dennis Young. We're here in Chicago at the ISTE conference. Um, I'm pleased to have Carolyn Sakura, Senior Director of the ISTE Standards Program from Portland, Oregon. You know, you might start off by just sharing a little bit about the ISTE and how it started and what it's all about. Sure. Um, ISTE, the International Society for Technology and Education, was founded more than 40 years ago. It grew out of the College of Education at huh. the University of Oregon. Uh -huh. At the time, it was mostly higher ed educators that were really exploring how technology could change learning and, and mm -hmm. what that means for education. And over time, it grew to actually have more K-12 educators than even teacher preparation educators. Mm -hmm. And so it has gone from a little <laughs> project at the College of Education to its own nonprofit, and now we have an office in Portland, Oregon, and Arlington, Virginia. Uh -huh. Since it was born, kind of uh, the higher ed, does it still serve higher ed? Absolutely. We have a really active um, teacher educator uh -huh. network. They're really preparing the next generation of teachers for these environments, these digital learning environments. Mm -hmm. So they're they're active and they're a really key constituency among our members and they play, they're play. they gonna play a really important role um, continuing to go forward as we reach this tipping point and there are more uh, K-12 schools that are using technology. Mm -hmm. They are now prepared, they have the role to prepare those new teachers for those environments. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me something about the, the, the standards because as I've spoken with many people throughout this conference, and it's a wonderful conference, by the way, everybody's saying the standards are new, and it covers a variety of roles, from faculty to teachers to administrators, and it goes on. So you have a pretty big job. I do, <laughs> and it's a great job, I have to say. So the standards, the ISTE standards, ISTE has been an author of the ISTE standards since 1998. Wow. We've had three generations of standards because we continually update them. And today's new standards, it's the third generation of the standards. Uh, we have the ISTE standards for students, the ISTE standards for educators, and we just today huh. released the ISTE standards for education leaders. Huh. And what they, what they used to be in the first generation was how to use technology. Today's standards are using technology to learn, to amplify learning. And if you think about it, what we were, what if we're able to do today with technology are many things that were not possible when you and I were in mm -hmm, school. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can Skype right. globally for yeah. free. Access with, is yeah. unbelievable. You, we, there is, uh, coding and yeah. computer science yeah. and, and young yeah. children are yeah. doing those now. There's real world project-based yeah. learning that uses technology. Yeah. There, there's satellites from NASA that send out <laughs> data that their student, middle school students are using in their projects. Is that right? Wow. So what, when I was going to school and we were going to the library <laughs> and going getting the encyclopedia to do research, it really is such when, when so yeah. big bodies of knowledge are at our fingertips. Instant. Instant. Yeah. Really, learning to learn is more important than learning facts. And the ISTE standards huh. Huh. give students the skills. They're really, they lead with pedagogy, and it's all about learning. Uh -huh. the, they start with the empowered learner as uh -huh. part of the student standards. Digital citizen, which is how to be uh, uh, informed proactive citizen in this digital world. Sure. Knowledge constructor, how to create meaning among lots of facts, because there, we have a, there's an overwhelming amount of data out there. So knowledge constructors being able to really curate that data and uh -huh. make meaning for yourself. Uh -huh. um, innovative designer, wow. learning how to iter design things and iterate and problem solve. Computational thinker is, uh -huh. is another new one in this generation of standards, really designed to um, help students learn how to 
use and collect and use and represent data, huh. how to uh, think algorithmically. Wow. Um, it's an important problem solving skill. Uh, the fifth standard is. <laughs> Goes on, doesn't it? It goes on. And these are all the fifth. Yeah. I'll just go really quickly. The fifth standard is um, creative communicator. Wow. And then the last standard under the student standards is a global collaborator. So I feel like what we grew up with uh -huh. is not enough for today's students. They're going to be facing a future where they have to know how to collaborate. They have to know how to communicate. They have to know how to compute. Um, and use computing um, because that's where our world is going mm -hmm. and that's where the jobs are. But even more than that is I really, getting back to that whole notion of learning to learn is so important, it's also a way that we can follow our passions and network with others that share our passions too. We can learn anything online with anybody at any time. Right. And teaching kids and our students to access that is an important skill. So, so the fear that existed with parents just a, a few years ago, that technology was creating a, a whole generation of introverts, couldn't speak to one another, didn't know how to collaborate, we're past that. Well, it's an interesting, <laughs> it's an interesting conundrum because while the world is at our fingertips. We yeah. can communicate and collaborate with anybody at any time. The fact is that when we're doing it on our screens, it does feel isolating. But the ISTE's uh, Digital Citizen Standard, which, uh -huh. is, which is mirrored not only in the student standards, but in the educator standards and in the education leader standards, really has a whole host of components. It includes how to be uh, a good digital citizen in terms of, you know, playing by the rules, mm -hmm. but it's also about taking care of oneself, being able to self-monitor mm -hmm. how much time mm -hmm. that you're online. Um, and also then being proactive and, and using it to supplement our real world experience, yeah. not to live in the digital world. So, pushing collaborative so much, I guess as senior director, you are collaborative in engaging the number of people that you need to have involved in developing these standards. So how many people are involved in this process? Because it's comprehensive. Yes. Well, we use a really um, effective way to update our standards. We call it the re refreshing process. Uh -huh. And there's, there's three different pillars. One, we do a literature review. What is the field saying right now in terms of research about what are the skills and the ways students can learn? Two, we have experts that cross many, many domains. And then three, we have a very robust um, pro uh, public comment mm -hmm. process. So in this last generation of standards, we've had over 6,000 people involved in the My process. Gosh. They're giving us feedback. They're telling <laughs> us what's right. They're telling us what needs to be added. They're helping us really create these standards. So I really, I'm proud of that. That's it's, Because it, it really, it's by educators for educators uh -huh. because their, their voices are really key and important in this process. <laughs>